we were saved yesterday. We're being saved right now. And by the grace of God, we'll be saved tomorrow. Done God saving you from stuff, then we'll just go ahead and bury you this week. Don't even be here. Why hang out in Las Vegas if you could be in heaven? You think you're done. Yeah. Right? Right. I mean, you know, they ought to have the most churches, I think, in Las Vegas than anywhere else in the world. Because oh, yes. it's the hottest place in the world.
not my notes. It's just a probing of the Lord. God's about to trust somebody that has trusted Him. Amen. You hear that? Yes. I say God to trust somebody that has trusted Him. And if you've been trusted in Him, if you've been doing the best you can, you go walk through an open door this week. I don't know how many of those represented raises or just representing a job in general, but God's not going to give you junk. You hear me? I said, God is not going to give you junk. Or you can't make it to the house of God. Or you can't serve the church and the kingdom of God. He's not going to make you have a job that sacrifices your altars.
Uh -huh. Jesus. And every seven minutes or so, just do that and continue to do that. Because if it's better, what you just said was, I'm getting healed. Yeah. You didn't get a miracle, you're getting a healing. It's working in the lumbar section of your body, somewhere around L3 to L7. And there comes a healer, and then up your spine, so stop asking him to heal you. Start exercising and stepping into the healing, because the healer is in the house, and it's is under the spirit. Just 
And since you wouldn't give any hit to him, I'll do it. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Thank you, Sousas. Hallelujah. And for 40 days, they were in shock. They were literally in shock. And I thought, wow. Imagine Peter walking on water and he's watching Jesus walk through walls and he can't even bend. He can't even bend the world. He can't even describe it. It's not describable. Why? Because the dimension that's coming to you, Peter, is not describable. You can't put it into layman's terms. What's about to come upon you, Luke? You're not going to be able to prolifically be able to write about it because it's not coming from earth. It's not coming from religion. It's not coming from me. It's not coming from the government. It's not coming from the social media. It's not coming from the social network. It's not coming from the neighborhood. It's about to come on down and it's going to come from heaven. It's going to come Shut up in my book. Shut up in my book. That's right. And the writer described, he said, it's, it's right. It's peace. It's, it's joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, but if you really bend, amen, the descriptive terms necessary to describe what Jesus was about to do next. Upon the point, after his resurrection, he begins to speak to them after these 40 days manifestations that aren't even lettered in the Holy Bible. It simply says this about in the first chapter of the book of Acts. And as Jesus was talking, he's speaking of things. Everybody say things. things. We all talk about things. Some talk about that kind of thing, and others talk about that other kind of thing. But Jesus said, I want to talk about some things. But these things don't pertain to your body's aching. These things don't pertain to your financial crisis. These things don't pertain to your personal issues. These things don't pertain to your family problems. These things don't pertain to your week's question mark. These things don't pertain to your monthly dues. These things don't pertain to that mortgage that you don't know how you're going to be. These things pertain to the kingdom of God. There's something I need to get you quickened and alerted to. Why? Because it's coming out of heaven and it's not going to be a long time. It's just a few more days from right now and there's going to be that point that comes out of heaven that's going to hit you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. And the last thing I need is for you to be thinking about what you need to take care of and what's concerned in your life. Because something is about to be released upon the confines of your faith system. And I need your attention on things. Peter later says on things about not on things of the earth. He says, why? He says, because hell's job, the world's job, flesh job, all the stuff around us is to try to use that, you know that crap mentality. What's that crap mentality? About the time you're about to rise, amen, above the level where the crap's dead, there's one little crap that grabs your leg and pulls you. It's that crap mentality. Why? It wants to keep you in the realm of where everybody else is at. But you see, we're not everybody else. Oh, amen. Yes. I said, we're not everybody amen. else. You see, we've been part by the blood of the land through a baptism in Jesus' name that took away the sin of the world by the life. We're not like everybody else. You see, we've been filled with a baptism of the Holy We've got an anointing upon our lives. 
Amen. Therefore, speaks to those that are not like everybody else in his hands. Put your adventure a little higher. There's something I want to give you, and I need your attention on me so you won't miss it when you come. Because when I lose upon you, what's wrapped up inside it hangs. It does things that you don't even know how to pray for. It moves things that you couldn't possibly move in two lifetimes, much less one. It accomplishes things underneath the layers of flesh that you couldn't accomplish by trying to force somebody with your flesh. You see, it's this realm, the kingdom I've been saying of them, is I'm about to loosen upon the earth. And when I loosen it upon the earth, it will literally shake governments. It will topple governments. Because how can you fight something you cannot see? You can't! How do you fight something that's greater than you? But you can't put your finger on. And all of a sudden, this king and his readiness was trying to alert the disciples. And simply, the Bible records it like this in Acts chapter 1, verse number 4 in your Holy Bible. It says like this. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father who seeth. He, he had heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized. Everybody say baptized. When was the last time you were baptized with the Holy Ghost? And then when you no longer had control, but it control and you couldn't just shut it off what you wanted to. Come on. Wow, good. See, I don't think it's really the fact that what about the Holy Ghost? The real question is, does the Holy Ghost have us? The real question is, can God stop us in the middle of Brazil losing? If you're into that, or whatever team, or whatever event captures your attention. And it's the second period, or the fourth quarter, or the finals, or the final three seconds, and God says, turn it off. I'm sorry, is this something I said? Good. Reach. You sure got quiet quick. And she turned into a denomination. <laughs> I thought I was preaching a positive thing here. Because we're all able to do that, right? Oh. We're all able to shut down when the Holy Ghost says, says, hey, I've got a word, I've got a movement, I've got an action, I've got a reaction, I've got a blessing, I've got an impartation. Not when the game's over. Not when one more quarter work. You just hang on. I just need to finish watching this. And I know you're talking to me. And I'll get there in a second. Oh, wow. Good. Let me tell you a story. It really shot me into the reality of awareness when Jesus says, become aware. And I am telling you, it is imperative. Everybody say right now. Right now. Yeah, right now. And how many of you have the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues? Raise your hand. Raise your hand real high. Wait. Just wait. Wait. Come on. I can't see your hand. You probably don't even have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because you're so chicken to wait. Hallelujah. Wait your hand. You have the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Wait. How many of you want the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Wait your hand. You're about to get it. 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 Did you hear me? I'm telling the God spoke to me and said, when you get to Las Vegas, you're going to preach about my power. He said, because the script doesn't have power. The lighting system doesn't have power. He said, I have all power in heaven. Yes. 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 Yes.
space to that quick. And it literally causes you to pull off. God says now, He said now, I'm purpose. Don't you think He knows you're right? I said, don't you think He knows your word? Amen, amen. Don't you think God knows your shit? Don't you think He knows how much of you love football? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I can't miss this thing. Okay, just miss it. <laughs> I didn't say miss going there. I said miss heaven. Miss the moment that heaven has described for that particular moment. Okay. Okay. That's a word from the Lord. I'm not to tell you. Yes. It didn't catch that. That is a word from the Lord. Don't miss heaven when it comes on us and says, stop what you're doing. Put your attention above. There's something I want to talk to you. I want to come from. It's going to help you way more than what you do. Amen. I was going to tell you a story. Ken Breach is his name. Great man of God. Tremendous sensitive to the Lord, pastor, and Grand City, Illinois. Kenneth Williams was, he became so sensitive to the voice of God that it, 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 it literally in my brain, I thought, I want to be more than that. I like that. Because he's like that. Couldn't they become like my brother? I want to be more than that. If that's available, then there's got to be more. Because when I look at somebody's anointing or ability, I know that in God's economy, there's more. Yes. I'm not saying I want to be better than them. I just know if God has that much, then He must have more. That's right. That's right. That's right. And if He has more, yeah. what am I doing living it out Come on. Man. Well, I could be living up there. That will just kind of have my thought to love me. You don't understand my life. That's the wrong way to look at it. You're in a different kingdom. You have been chosen on purpose. Yes, yes. You're not here because you were born into some family that comes to this church. You're here because God chose you. He chose you. What waste of time. Well, you can invest time. Explore. Some people like to do when they get a new app on their phone. But I know you're taking notes. I know that. Right? I do. But you know what people like to do when they get a new app? Just load it and turn their phone on. No. Uh, you're nuts. You don't know anything about smartphones. <laughs> you're not very good mine. No, when people get a new app on that phone, they want to explore. Yep. They want to find out everything that app can do. You imagine when God stops you and he says, hang on right there, I want to impart something. That's like God downloading a new app into your soul chamber. <laughs> yeah. The next thing you're supposed to do is not put it away and turn it off. The next thing you're supposed to do because I'm going to take notes. I need to put this into the second book I think just came to me. But the kind of brief said, I was driving down the road, had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Driving down the road, the Lord said, Kenneth, are you ready? He said, I knew that voice and the way he talked to me like that was when God was about to take me out of my body into a spiritual dimension. And I said, yes, Lord, just let me park my car, as he was driving, and I'll be ready. So it took, what, three, four, five minutes to find a parking place where he could, because usually he said I would pass out. And I didn't want to pass out when I was driving. Not a bad day. And uh, so he said, I went, it took about three, five minutes to park my car. And I stood there, sat there, and I said, Lord, I'm ready. Take me 
where you want me to go. And he said, the visitation of that moment was gone. And, and Brother White just loved it, Brother Reese. I felt the same thing. I thought, oh no. I thought, Brother Reese, he said, I just pondered. I thought, Lord, oh, oh what did I do? I thought, wow. Oh. You know what the Holy Ghost is equated to? A dove. You know what a dove is? Get close to this skittish. It doesn't take much to spin it away. Now, God, how sensitive is this spirit of God that at one resistant moment, God just says, I'll come back when you're ready. The change for a moment. Worship the Lord just for a moment. And ask the Lord right now, not because of awareness in my soul chamber to become alert as of right now like it's never been before and if you have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues why don't you give your voice to what's in the atmosphere there comes that next dimension of your back brother bend over again and begin to say in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name that's not the only in this house. Those of you that are sick, right now we get to say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And look for so that they were wrote for the Mahaya. And then the healing virtue. Look for so come upon your back. Come upon your knees. Come upon your legs. Come upon your neck, sister. Now, in all fairness to God, three weeks later, Brother Reed said, I was sitting in my office, and I felt the visitation of the Lord very strong. He said, I was taking, doing some notes, something, working in the office. And the Lord came in my office and said, Kenneth, are you ready now? He said, of course, in any day I dropped my pants, I said, yes, sir. And she took me on an incredible 942 mile trip. I said, how did you know it was 942 miles? He said, I asked him. Uh. <laughs> I thought, wow. To be able to get in the atmosphere where you just come to the Lord. Not like some faraway object. your hands again. There's some room for this atmosphere. And just worship Jesus. Jesus, I worship you. That's it. Go ahead and love on him just a moment. I worship you. I adore you. I worship you. I adore you.
know what I'm intrigued by? I'm kind of perplexed by their response, but yet again, it reminds me of our human. By calling me, it splits us between two worlds, because Sunday's over, Monday comes, and people seem to get this, it's like a mob mentality. It's just, everybody's driving to their places of work. And, 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 and before I did this, one guy asked me what I did for work after I preached my guts out up in the Northwest. That's why I'm in Las Vegas, not the Lord of West right now. <laughs> Preach my guts out, pray for everything living and dead. <laughs> he looked at me and said, that was real nice, sir. What do you do for work? I just looked right back at him. I said, nothing. <laughs> if you're dumb enough to ask that question, I'm dumb enough to respond. <laughs> but I actually have a 17 hour a day job in the regular work world. I know what it is to leave a Sunday service and then Monday the mob mentality gets a hold of you. You turn on your typical talk show because that's what you've always done. You turn on your typical newscaster because that's what you do. You turn on the traffic because that's what you do. You get in this mode and I get a witness. But I hear the Holy Ghost saying, keep your antennas up on Monday, keep your alertness up on Tuesday. There's something that's going to happen seven days a week, 24 7. And a body of believers that we can call upon. You know what happens if we stay aware? We stay out of the counseling office. Because God already saw it before it did. God already answered it before we drew a question. But I'm, I'm just, I, I guess it normalizes things. And it helps you and I to realize, well, I ain't so that angry. Because think about it. Here are disciples that have walked with Jesus for three years. They have seen miracles beyond imagination. Miracles that are written about. Like 37 miracles that they've actually scripted in the scriptures. The rest of them they don't even talk about. There's so many miracles to record. They, the books couldn't contain them, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And so, here's these disciples that have seen something that most people haven't even seen. I mean, imagine bread multiplying right in front of you while you're handing it out to feed other people. Oh. We have 10 times the amount of people we planned on, but we still have extra turkeys. <laughs> and turkeys keep multiplying. Oh, yes. <laughs> Every time you open the grill, there's another turkey. Amen. I mean, I don't know what it was like, but for them it was bread, fish. Yeah. They kept looking down, and it was full. Uh -huh. It never ran out. Here's these guys that literally saw Jesus after, after they were walking on water and came back into the boat. The boat literally was at the shore. It got transformed. It literally got transformed. They were in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. Peter and Jesus get back in the boat. They worship Jesus. The next thing, they're at shore. It doesn't say they swam the shore, they floated the shore, or they floated the shore. They beat the people there by boat and literally just run boat. And the disciples run up and How do we get here? Dude, I ain't asking. You ask him. I ain't I asked the last time when I looked like an idiot. You asked him. So I ain't asking. No problem with their sex. Why? Because you just didn't even come compute the brain. Matter of fact, some of your brain just took a warp right now. I can tell it by the wrinkles on the forehead. Did that really happen? But if you don't believe that, you're not going to believe that. Wow. Really? And that's simple stuff. <laughs> the stuff God's got in store, your brain can't even facilitate that. That's why it's going to happen to us a different way. And I'm, I'm thinking, here's these guys that have experienced this. No, they did. Listen to this. Verse number six. 
after Jesus had said, hey, I'm going to baptize you with something that comes from heaven. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, listen to this. Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? What? No, no, no. We're talking two different kingdoms here. You're asking, are you going to restore government seats and political positions back to your children? Are you going to overtake Rome so we can get our taxes back in order? Are you going to fix our normal lives? That's the question they were asked after all that they saw. Man, when I read that, I got happy. I thought, dear God, I'm not as bad as I thought I was. These guys walk with him, talk with him, perform miracles with him, watch the dead raised with him, and they still had that question. Just fixing a local problem. What? He is about to lose into the domain of your world. Does it just fix your current issue? It fixes your So, that he turned aside and went to see. Then God speaks out. So God did not speak to Moses until Moses got out of his pew and said, okay, God, I'm coming. I got to see what this great thing is about. Yeah, I've been here time after time after time after time after time. But I got to see why you're moving the way you move. Because if you're moving, you're wanting to create. The Bible says in Genesis, and God moved upon the face of the deep, right? You know what happens after God moves? God says. You know what happens after God says? It obeys. There's obedience and there's creation. Why? That's Genesis principle all over. God moves. What's next? God says. What's next? And God saw that it was good. He creates. So when you feel the movement of God, that's God saying, Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm about to create something inside of your soul. And God saw. Moses bear great interest. God said, now I'll tell you stuff. Moses, I'm going to tell you stuff nobody on this planet knows anything about. For the first time in this world's history, I'm going to reveal to somebody these words. I am that I am. Isn't that the first time you told him that? If you know your Bible, it is. It's the first time he reveals the I am that I am. And I thought, wow, what other things are you ready to reveal to us if we will make a big deal of your presence when it shows up? Look at him. There are angels that came into this building by the heart. There's about to be a distribution in this house, and an impartation in the Hold up your 